Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about swapping variables, uh, particularly in Python, uh, which makes this a little bit easier. But we're also going to show some magic that happens behind the scenes and how Python actually optimizes this. Now, you might think, oh, Python, compiling, optimizers. Uh, you'd be kind of surprised, but we'll show that in a little bit. OK, so typically in programming languages, when you have two variables, let's say that x is set to 1 and y is set to 2, uh, in order to swap them, you usually will assign them to a third variable, uh, say z equals x, or save the value of x, then assign x equal to y, and then assign y equal to z to change the two variables. So you can see x is now 2 and y, y is now 1. This is typically how you would have to do this in another programming language. And usually the compiler will notice this and generate specialized machine code that swaps the variables directly, uh, usually using like an exchange instruction if your processor supports it. Uh, now in Python, there is a much more convenient way of swapping variables, which is using multiple assignment and tuples. Uh, you can assign x comma y equal to y comma x, and this will swap the two variables. So now if we look at x and y again, you'll see that they're back to one and two. And there's actually a little bit of magic that's going on here. This is, uh, if you want to think about it, how it would actually run uh, if there weren't an optimizer, basically what this does is it builds a tuple uh, and sort of keeps that as a temporary variable. So you can imagine a tuple named z that's assigned to x comma or, or y comma x. You know, if you look at this tuple, you'll see it's the value two one. Uh, then this assignment here unpacks this tuple into into those two variables. So you're basically doing x comma y equals z, and that will swap the two variables going from 1, 2 to 2, 1. Now, the actual interesting part about this is Python has recognized this as a common pattern and actually optimizes this behind the scenes. And we're going to show this using the disassembler. I did another video on that. I'll try and remember to link that in the description. Uh, but we're going to make a little function here. We're going to do that swap operation, y comma x equals x comma y, and then we're just going to print it because uh, that seems like the most useful thing to do here. If we take the disassembler here and disassemble this function, we actually have to import it first, of course, dis.disf. This is going to show how Python compiles this function, and you'll see all of the bytecode here. Uh, now, Python is a stack-based language, so I'm going to actually open up a little bit of a... Uh, whoops, I'm going to do it outside of the... Uh, outside of the VM, we're going to open up a little bit of paint here and show you a little bit how this executes. First, I'm going to copy this out so that we can actually see what we're doing from a text-based form. Uh, let's pick a better font than that. This will do. Make it wider. Okay, cool. So Python is a... That didn't actually change the font. Whatever. <laughs> Python is a stack-based language. This means that when it's executing these bytecodes, it's building and growing a kind of data stack inside of the function. And it starts empty. Uh, so you can imagine this as being kind of the top of the stack. Each of the instructions in here is either going to load stuff from the stack or move them around or do something like that. Um, so you'll see here the first thing that it does, it's going to load the value of x. So in this case, uh, let's say let's say we called x, let's say we called x and y with uh, f of one comma two. We'll do x equals one, y equals two, just to make this more clear. Uh, so first it's going to load the value of x, so it's going to put that onto the stack. So you'll see here we have put 1 onto the stack. Then it's going to load the value of y. We were to draw another box and put the value of y on here. Then it does this rot2 instruction. This is a rotate instruction. Basically it takes the two things on the, uh, the, the last two things on the stack and reorders them. So basically what it's doing is it's taking this 2, moving it up, oh, let's put us in transparent mode. Uh, so move the two up and move this back underneath. So it's rotated the two values, and then it's gonna store those values back. So first it's gonna store fast one, it's gonna take the latest version, or the latest value on the stack, pop that off and assign it. This is essentially going to do y equals one, and remove this value. And then, oh, let's remove that a little cleaner. Yeah, well, <laughs> delete it too much. Ah. That's the problem with demoing in paint. Uh, and then the next thing is it's going to store fast into x. So you'll see you'll pop this value and assign x equals 2. And you'll see this is effectively swapped the two values. Uh, x became 2 and y became 1. So this is, kind of, this is kind of that first line in that function that does this swap evaluation. 
Now, if it were to actually do the full evaluation here, you know, build a tuple and then unpack it, we can simulate that by using a temporary variable. So if we do this, z equals x, y, and then y comma x equals z, and we disassemble this, you'll see here that it's doing, you know, two load fast instructions, then it's building a tuple, then storing that tuple into z, then it's immediately loading that tuple out of z, unpacking the two values into those variable or into the stack and then storing those into x and y so this is this is what it would kind of look like if it uh weren't optimized actually more realistically we would probably if you if you remove these two bytecodes here that would be kind of the slow version of swap um but python has realized you know <laughs> we can optimize this we can avoid this build tuple and just jump straight to these uh, store instructions without having to do that. Uh, there is still the, the rot too there, but. Anyway, that's swapping in Python. Uh, hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.